It's the hottest book around, written more than 100 years ago. The autobiography of Mark Twain is the must-have gift of the year, but you might have some trouble getting it. Now, the University of California Press first printed 7,500 copies. They're now on 375,000 and can't churn them out fast enough. Fox Connecticut's Lori Perez joins us live now from Twain's Hartford home with a look at all the fuss. Lori. Well, the autobiography of Mark Twain is sprinting up the New York Times bestseller list. You can barely get it on Amazon. I understand it's on back order at Barnes & Noble. But you know where you can get it? Here at the Mark Twain House in Hartford. They still have several, about 100 copies left, I should say. And here's what's behind all the hoopla. Mark Twain started dictating his autobiography over several years in the early 1900s. But he had one interesting caveat. He said, you cannot publish it until I have been dead for 100 years. Well, he died on April 21st in 1910. So earlier this month, they published it, and now it is getting all of the attention. The autobiography is a marketing masterpiece. Twain's stipulation that it be published 100 years after his death has many wondering what they've been waiting for. Sitting in Twain's Hartford parlor today, publicist Steve Courtney says the answer is classic Twain. Unexpected and unique, not your birth-to-death history. It's part childhood stories, part current events, in no particular order, whatever came to his mind as it came to his mind. Some people compare this to uh, Mark Twain's blog. <laughs> For the first time, you're reading uh, just his innermost thoughts as, you might, as he might express them as he was walking around a room. Thoughts about his life here in Hartford and around the world. The editor says it has some never-before-heard stories of Twain's saucier side, including a dressing down of a Pratt & Whitney engineer whose failed mechanical typesetter cost Twain big bucks in investments. Accounts of it before now have been slightly censored. What he says about him in this autobiography, I cannot repeat on a family wow. channel. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you get the raw Mark Twain here. Wow. Pretty good stuff. Courtney says Twain first started thinking about an autobiography when he lived here in this Connecticut home. Then he dictated it between 1904 and 1910 as he traveled and moved away. The book is the first of three volumes of Twain's musings on the centennial of his passing, striking a chord still. He was so way ahead of his time in his style of humor, and uh, he, it was deadpan. It was the, he, could do a, he could probably do everything that uh, Stephen Colbert and John uh, Stewart do, uh, just uh, yeah. with a snap of his fingers. Now, truth be told, parts of Twain's dictations have been published before, but this is the first time that they have been published in their entirety, and that's been bringing a surge of interest here at the Hartford House, too. I understand uh, lots of crowds have been coming since the spring, including lots of famous Twain fans. Courtney told me that Michael Richards, who played Kramer on Seinfeld, he was here recently. Um, he understands that Clint Eastwood has shown some interest in doing some sort of a project involving Mark Twain. Very exciting here in Hartford. We are live in Hartford, I'm Lori Perez, Fox, Connecticut News.